Learning in a small group is a natural way of learning for the adult learner. As a pedagogical tool, small group learning and learning in groups all in all is a widespread method in university context. However, many conscious questions remain that secure successful teaching in groups. By understanding the basic small group phenomena, the teacher is able to observe, interpret and relate to the group phenomena. There can be various kinds of adult small groups. These groups are always unique and binded to the context. So this is a group uh, for university pedagogical studies. We are uh, teachers at the university uh, who are studying, well, basically teaching skills and pedagogical skills. This is uh, the second phase of university pedagogical studies. All of us, we have done the first phase. And now then uh, we are a group, group of teachers who want to develop more skills when it comes to teaching. And uh, we volunteer to take the second phase of pedagogical studies. Small group pedagogy is very hard to verbalize. One has to experience it first-hand in able to get a grasp. Teaching and learning in small groups can be a challenge. The learners present themselves in a strong manner and the teacher reflects the personal mindset and method to the group. Both the teacher and the learners have to surrender themselves to the sessions totally. Learning in a group is very different uh, because uh, you have to take into account the, the, the reactions of the group. And humans instantly and automatically react to what's happening in, a, in their social environment. But it's a very strong experience on the other hand. Sometimes things that you learn in a group because the, there's a very deep feeling, very deep uh, feeling associated with the, with the situation that this gets ingrained very deeply compared to something that you learn, uh, let's say, by reading. Learning and studying the phenomena in a small group is a collaborative effort. Learning takes place mainly by discussion and functional tools. The live house of mirrors metaphor describes this collaborative event at its best in a suitable way. My own ideas are reflected back at me, new and enriched. To learn by discussion, it means to me that uh, it gives you also a personal meaning when it comes to learning, when you learn in a group, in interaction, by discussing. I, I work in a research group doing, doing chemistry, and, and in this environment we, we discover new things day in, day out, and for students, they should be getting the same experience, and through this kind of dialogue and, and uh, openness, I, I think this is the only way to true great learning. The participants must experience that they can operate safe and as their true selves. Acting and being in the group feels secure. And the element of safety guarantees that the participant dares to get involved and enables learning by stepping out of the personal comfort zone. Safety is very important. And uh, it's uh, difficult to explain where it comes from because uh, it's, uh, part of the safety is uh, that you feel that you are being uh, accepted. Experienced safety is an important aspect. It enables one to dare to participate as one is, to verbalize personal emotions and express thoughts, however incomplete they might be. This way others are invited and accepted too, incomplete. From the viewpoint of safety, starting a group is important. One is allowed and it is recommended to use time in the beginning. To warm up is acceptable and the group does not have to head straight to the issue. However, a set of common rules and principles are needed, especially if the process continues for a longer period of time. The leader of the process should be coherent and dialogical in the unconventional role of the teacher. All in all, the post is a challenging one.
the leader of the session, obviously has a big role in, in showing the example of, of what is allowed and what is not allowed. The teacher acts so that the interaction is not focused only on the leader's status. By action and dialogue, the authority is handed to the group and the teacher operates from the background. In a way, the aim is an illusion of total equality between the learners and the teacher. In this context, being dialogical means the attitude towards others. Ideally, the learner is appreciative and positive towards other participants. This is reflected as action that one can identify. One of the big things that we have discussed here is that we actually don't know what the dialogue is. We, we tend to think that it's something, it's a discussion between two people, but it's, it's something more. Actually, I've forgotten the formal definition of it already, but it's, you kind of just feel it somehow. It's, it's something more. It, it's very difficult to actually pinpoint what actually causes it or where it stems from. But I think it, it, everything starts from, from the very beginning. So unless you start off the right foot, you could say, unless you do this, then it's, it's just not going to work out in the end. So the beginning and, and the formation of the group, this really plays a huge role. So everyone kind of realizes and, and gets a feel for what's their role in the group and, and so on. I, Personally, I've felt that this has a huge impact, or at least has had on us. Learning in a small group delivers both learning and deep personal experiences, such as belonging, need to share, inspiration, and learning completely new procedures. This happens even though the target is often reached by confusion. The adult learners very often experience that learning in a small group even includes the element of beauty. I think the group beauty is in the way that it energizes, actually gives you energy instead of draining you from it. It has really um, exemplified for me like how, how um, rewarding uh, also like socially and emotionally uh, group work can can be. I think this group has been a very good opportunity to share also the, the kind of more negative experiences and what you might experience as kind of tough in teaching or difficult in teaching. In a group maybe the most beautiful thing is that sometimes, just sometimes, you see that maybe somebody else is also getting the point of view that you are making that you see the, the twink in their eyes that okay they are getting this and this I think is the beauty of, of learning that you, you, you share the same experience. It's basically changed my view on teaching entirely so I would say that I'm, I'm almost becoming a radical teacher in this sense that I just want to break the classical barriers. I feel that it kind of develops my sense of gratitude and sense of um, that when I get good things from other people, I need to pay it forward. Really positive and developing uh, interactions, like they, they develop this, my, my kind of depth to pay it forward uh, to my students and to my supervisees and to my colleagues. So that's, that's how important this, this has been. <laughs>